And good afternoon, everybody. Chris Bartell here from the Cascade Pacific Council with today's Wednesday webinar. We're going to be covering Wood Badge today. It's going to be awesome. We have some great guests today who are going to give us all teach us all about what Wood Badge. I'm excited about it because I'm attending later this year. So we're all going to hear about that momentarily. But of course, first, as we do every week, we're going to give you a, a little lowdown of the latest news around the Cascade Pacific Council, as well as some deadlines. There are some deadlines and things like that for everybody to be aware of. So we're going to dive into that right now. But first of all, we're going to do a little safety moment here. We've been doing this uh, recently at, this, at the beginning of this year, and it's something we do in scouting. And, uh, and I find remembered, you know, we should be doing these with these webinars too. So these are great. Uh, and just a great reminder, as we're all out playing in the snow and doing lots of activities and things like that, today's safety moment is about concussions. So some signs, I was thinking of this as we were inner tubing, my scout group was inner tubing up at Nanich Lodge this weekend. I thought, whoa, the snow conditions are a little iffy. We need to be careful. But so this was a great reminder for me as well as I was researching it. And so here are the signs and symptoms of a concussion when you whack your head as a headache. Uh, confusion, forgetfulness, dizziness, and a loss of balance or coordination, as well as nausea slash vomiting, uh, blurry or double vision, sensitivity to light or noise, sleepiness or lethargy, personality changes, and a loss of consciousness, of course, whether it's brief or prolonged, that's, uh, that doesn't occur actually with all concussions, but it's good to note some of these things. So headache and confusion and forgetfulness, dizziness, you know, so if kids are out sledding or skiing, any of those activities or uh, any time of the year when we're out uh, running around and having adventures and you bonk your head, these are good to be aware of. And also the treatment for this is, is really interesting. Basically you need to rest in a quiet, darkened area, just like as in a tent, for instance, and Really, the adult leaders really just need to pay attention and monitor that patient for any change of symptoms and allow, this is interesting, I didn't know this, this is new, but allowing the patient, somebody who's walked their head, to actually sleep if needed. It's actually no longer recommended to keep someone with a concussion awake. So that is new. Uh, also, you should limit the use of uh, electronics and reading, interestingly enough, just uh, wanted to give those eyeballs a rest. And if symptoms persist for more than 24 hours or become worse, you really need to get that individual to a physician and when in doubt, give them to a physician immediately. And especially if you're in the woods or whatnot and you need to evacuate them, make sure you do that in a timely, timely fashion. Uh, the treatment actually is, like I said, immediate evacuation. If the headache actually becomes worse, there is repeated vomiting, the patient suffers a seizure, there's drowsiness or increases in the patient who can't be woken up from taking their nap, and speech is slurred, the patient seems to be confused or irritable, there is increased dizziness or imbalance, and the patient feels weakness or numbness in the arms or legs. So these are uh, really important to note that, that if, a, if an individual bonks their head and you think they may have a concussion and they are having any of these symptoms, they really need to see a physician ASAP, so evacuate them immediately. All right, there is our safety moment for today. Let's dive into the latest news here. We're just gonna go through this pretty quick. Lots of things to be aware of, but of course we wanna get into Wood Badge and talk about that. So first of all, we have some new COVID guidelines and updates. If you go to cpcbsa.org slash COVID, you're going to have some new materials there. There's a new meeting and attendance log we want everybody to keep track of for five weeks. So please do that. These are, these are a whole list of guidelines and recommendations. It's not exhaustive this time around. There's just, just some new updates and things to be aware of. So please check that out at cpcbsa.org slash COVID. All right, some things to do around the Cascade Pacific Council. Of course, horses. Yes, we've got horses, a whole plethora of them, the largest horse herd of any council in the Boy Scouts of America. And so we've got great opportunities here. And just want you to be aware of them because you can sign up for these now. So we have Lil Buckaroo for scouts ages six to nine. These are two hour classes. You get to learn all about horses and just have a fantastic time. Learn to be a cowboy. It's pretty great. It's actually happening now all the way through May. It's at Butte Creek Scout Ranch. So come on out and check it out at cpcbsa.org slash horses. Also, January 31st is the deadline to save up 15 bucks for half day rides and 30 bucks for full day rides. If you actually wanna come out and do a weekend horse ride with you, your family, your scout unit, Awesome, awesome time for anyone ages 10 and up. There are opportunities, like I said, for half day and full day. So check that out. The information, of course, is at cpcbsa.org slash horses. 
All right, a couple, couple, couple of upcoming events here just want you to know about and some deadlines and things. So tonight at 7 p.m. is the training for Snack Attack, our spring fundraiser. So you can raise money for your next awesome adventure. You can get the information and sign up and register for tonight's training at 7 p.m. That's tonight at cpcbsa.org slash snack attack. Also, Super Weekend registration is now open. We've been mentioning this. This is super exciting because we have new Super Weekend activities for Cub Scouts this year. Super awesome. And what it is, is it's kind of like a mini summer camp. It's going to be great. So check it out. We have a weekend for Cub Scout packs on March 4th through 6th and the first weekend of April as well. Scouts BSA units, a lot of you know about Super Weekend. You've been wanting to do this. I know my scouts have been. And we have weekends available in March, April, and September. It's all going to be at Camp Merriweather there for Scouts BSA youth. And this is going to be climbing and shooting sports and all the good stuff. Uh, a lot of the good stuff anyway will be open. So it's really, really a fun time to just kickstart everything into gear and the spring and uh, get ready for summer camp all that great easy weekend for you adults to just bring the bring the scouts out and just have a great time so check that out at cbcbsa.org under the adventures tab you'll see it there also for scouts bsa youth we have some new meriting with the experts classes these are at evergreen aviation and space museum awesome opportunities to start earning some additional merit badges there are complete courses and partial courses you can do a search at cpcbsa.org calendar for these we have courses right now in american labor engineering aviation and sustainability at, with our friends at the evergreen aviation and space museum awesome opportunities there and a whole bunch of them that's why we list them in the calendar because there's a whole bunch of weekends and opportunities for that scouting for food is happening in spring i know some of you did it actually in the winter time as well which is awesome but we are kickstarting this year scouting for food in the spring so spring scouting for food the first weekend of march uh, you can go to cpcbsa.org sff that's scouting for food and you can actually order your door hangers there because we're going to do door hangers this year. They're going to be super awesome. And then you can actually reach out to your local food bank or partner. We've actually been reaching out to them as well. And basically, we will deliver these door hangers. You can hang them up and then go around and collect food. Awesome opportunity. And did you know, as a matter of fact, we collect tens of thousands of pounds of food for local food banks and pantries every year. In a normal year before COVID, we were doing about a, more than 100,000 pounds of food. I mean, isn't that incredible? So let's do it. Let's all get together and do this. If we can all do it together, I'd love us to, you know, do like 500,000 pounds food. Wouldn't that be awesome? So let's get there. That'd be a great goal. Uh, you can check that out at cpcbsa.org slash SFF. And that's going to be the first weekend of March. Okay, save the dates. We're actually going to talk about wood badge. So we'll dive and take a deep dive into that here momentarily. But that's happening later on this year in September. So we'll talk about that shortly. World Jambo, World Jamboree is happening in 2023 in August in Korea. Awesome, awesome, exciting opportunities there to meet scouts from all over the world. National Jamboree is also having another opportunity to meet scouts from all over the United States. It's really fantastic. And uh, I know Andrew Danner, who's going to be joining us today, is uh, can also always give a good plug for that because I think he's been to, seems like all of them, I don't know, it's lots. Anyway, we'll talk to him about that too, maybe. Anyway, save the date also for the Outdoor Skills Institute. This is May 13th through 15th. These are adult classes, so it's kind of became wood badge, which is an adult uh, course. This is adult classes for outdoor skills. You can learn about everything from Dutch oven cooking to actually becoming a, an instructor for climbing or, um, or shooting. So check that out. It's going to be May 13th through 15th. We're going to have registration open here shortly. So watch your email for that for those of you in the Cascade Pacific Council. Great opportunity there to, to hone some outdoor skills. Okay, a couple, couple quick things. Couple other last minute, last news updates here. As you may know, we are starting Camp for All. It's our fundraising campaign that goes all toward camping activities and getting scouts to camp. So you, if you're in a scout unit and you're, you're listening now, you can actually go to cpcbsa.org slash start camp for all. And you can check out all the materials there to kick off the campaign. And let's get tons of scouts to camp, more scouts to camp, give them an incredible opportunity to just get outdoors and have an incredible time at summer camp. That's what it's all about. Also, we have the uh, the Kerr Contractors Sporting Clays Shootout is happening, and check that out. If you're into uh, into shooting sports, you might want to check out cpcbsa.org slash shootout and put together a little team. This is basically golf with shotguns. It's really incredible, fun experience. There are opportunities actually to become a sponsor as well or to start a team. So check that out at cpcbsa.org slash shootout. If you like shotguns, you need to check that out. 
All right. Also, we have a couple more bunkhouses that you can actually sponsor at Camp Merriweather. These are our brand new bunkhouses. You can have your name on it or you can dedicate it to a friend or family member or whatnot. And so you can actually reach out to Mike Egan about this. This is an awesome opportunity to have just be a part of Camp Merriweather history. Really awesome opportunity. You can contact Mike Egan at michael.egan. That's michael.egan at scouting.org for more information on that. Uh, lastly here, there is a new marketing campaign from the Boy Scouts of America called Adventure On, and you can get all the information on that at cpcbsa.org slash marketing. There are going to be new materials. We're going to build building out more materials as well. There's opportunities there to, to, uh, to do some webinars and things like that with National uh, Boy Scouts of America. It's going to be awesome. So Adventure On, that's going to be the theme this year. It's really exciting. All right. And like I said, there's resources, downloads, web links to webinars, all of that there. Okay, Whew. there's a lot going on. Isn't it amazing? I'm so, I love it. I love it. How much is going on here around the Cascade Pacific Council? But now we are going to chat about what you're actually here for and what you're paying attention to, really, which is not me in the news. It's actually here to talk about Woodbatch. So I'm going to welcome our awesome guests here. We have Dolly Olson and Andrew Danner, and they are going to tell us all about Wood Badge. I hear people talk about it, and I go, what the heck is Wood Badge? I'm kind of this newbie, it seems like. I'm, you know, so anyway. Andrew, Dolly, you there? We are. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Greetings. Hey, my name is Andrew Danner, and I have been selected to be the course director for the 2022 Wood Badge, CPC Wood Badge. Below me is my good friend and our course mentor, Dolly Olson. Dolly is a two-time co former course director and has mentored many of us through um, this great opportunity to uh, learn lots about yourself and come out and spend some time with Dolly and I. Dolly, what is Wood Badge? Oh my gosh, it's such an amazing experience. It's a scout training like you've never taken it before. Um, we have, it's a national leadership course and it's offered only to scouts scouting volunteers and professionals. And so you're gonna meet a wide variety of people from across the council in multiple roles. You'll learn more about yourself and scouting within the Cascade Pacific Council. Um, it's just a, a welcoming atmosphere where you'll also learn about yourself and how you can use these skills in your personal life. You can use your skills at home, at your church, at your job. Um, you may actually be able to improve some of those things. That's fantastic. Oh man, I'm so excited. We have built a fantastic, fantastic team to deliver an amazing curriculum this September. And we want you to come out. We want you to come out, spend time. And let me tell you some of the reasons why I think this is worth it, definitely. You get to spend time with Dolly and I, like I said earlier, just kidding aside, you get to meet others from all around our council. Sometimes we even get folks that come in from other councils to come to Wood Badge. You're going to acquire vulnerable, valuable skills in listening, communicating, conflict management, and leading change. The presentations in the curriculum are amazing you're going to get to see presenters presenting a curriculum and share with you personal experiences, like these great photos here. This is from the last course. Um, share with you thoughts on how you can be a better leader, how we can lead others. Learn more about leadership. Empower, learn to empower, not only yourself, but to empower others to lead, inspire. One of my favorite things about this cur curriculum is inspire others. And you will learn that, how to inspire others, inspire yourself, your teammates. You will inspire us if you come out. And so much more. The wonderful staff we've put together, the uh, methods and aims of scouting, and so much more. Those are the reasons why I think you should come out to Wood Badge this September. Dolly, what would you like to add to that? Well, I think you're covering it pretty well there, Andrew. 
um, if you've ever wondered why things happen the way they happen and how you could influence that to happen in a better way, um, if you've wanted to change how something is working within your unit or how things maybe are happening in scouting that you think could take a new direction, uh, this has the materials to guide you in that, in that shaping that way you want to be. Yeah, absolutely. These photos are fantastic. Those, uh, the memories there in the last group of photos, the individuals with, there we go, with the uh, orange hats. I happen to be the, uh, the trainer for these individuals. They were from the, uh, the Beaver group, the, uh, and folks from Salem, Albany, Vancouver, um trying to think we had uh from Hillsborough um an amazing group and some of them are still with us um I'm looking at the photo right now Melissa she's active up in Vancouver I see Barb Barb is active down in the Salem area matter of fact Barb serves as the Barbara she serves as the district chair down there uh Matt Matt um I don't know what Matt's currently doing but he was he he inspired me a lot his story his personal stories of why he was at the course, he inspired me a lot. Um, Bob, Bob Nash, Bob's over um, in the Milwaukee area. So these folks are still out there leading and inspiring others. Lifelong hey, friendships. Absolutely. Uh, looks like our longtime friend and uh, our, for this course, assistant scoutmaster of troop guides, Pat Anderson has joined us. Hey, Pat. Hey, how's it going? Sorry, I'm right. late. Yeah. Hey, we were talking about earlier, and Chris is uh, giving us this format to share um, why Wood Badge? Why come to Wood Badge? And I listed why I think you should come to Wood Badge. So if you repeat that, you, I know you just got on the call. That's okay. <laughs> I'll try not to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can tell you when I was first looking into it, I knew very little about Wood Badge. And as I was kind of getting to know the course uh, going through the days, one thing that really impressed me is I started to have that feeling that I had as a young scout. So when I was scouting back in the 80s and 90s, uh, I had this feeling of like camaraderie and just like having fun with my friends and, and competing against other patrols. And I had that exact same feeling as an adult, which I had never really had before because right? as an adult scouter, I, I'm always worried about, you know, making sure the, the, the youth are having fun and are safe and everything. And, you know, I didn't have to worry about that at all. I just had to worry about myself and my fellow patrol mates. And we just had a fun time. That's great. If you look at all these photos, what do they have? And what's the common theme there? Fun. Here's one right here. I know that lovely lady. That's my <laughs> wife, Karen. <laughs> Smiles. Smiles. Yeah. It, I know there's some apprehensive when you come to something, you're not quite sure what it is. It's easy to kind of maybe that first couple of hours, second guess, am I in the right spot? Um, and it can be intimidating. It's not meant to be. Um, but if you're new to something, it can be a little intimidating. But man, at the end of that week, you're going to go, wow, what an experience. And it's not over. That's just the end of the curriculum and the course for that particular week. But the journey really starts after. And, uh, but just the smiles, I, I just, that, it just inspires me. Another thing that really impressed me just being at, on a course is I got to meet a whole bunch of other people who were just like me, like on fire for scouting, wanting to do the next thing and do it much better than we've done it before. Yeah, absolutely. I have met so many amazing people through this adventure. I've served on four courses. This will be my uh, fifth and final as a, as a staff member. Um, and I just have some amazing stories, some amazing friends and an example of two of you. And Chris, we're so excited for you because you are the first participant to sign up and we cannot wait for you after this experience is over to share what you learned. Well, I'm excited too. And so tell me, tell me a little bit more about how it's set up. I literally feel like I know, I know nothing, which you would think I should, since I've been like a scout for as long as I can remember. And my kids have been involved for a gazillion years, but tell me about how it's sort of set up. I, I know you have all talked so much about, and Dolly, you mentioned that it's, 
it's kind of this convergence of things we might learn in, in the corporate world uh, about training and working with people and, and interconnectivity with folks and, and teamwork and all of that. But how is it sort of set up? How does that work? I, mean, I see all the pictures and it looks like fun. And it's really interesting, like you were saying, Pat, that it's like, eh, it's kind of like when I was a kid, we get to do this fun this fun experience at like we're kids, but it's such an interesting, sounds like such an interesting convergence of both something that we're learning some really, um, I don't want to say standardized, but some real high level training uh, tools and leadership tools, but yet still having a lot of fun at it too. Chris, that's a great question. And I'm going to defer to Dolly and Pat. Pat just came off the last course uh, the 2021 course as the senior patrol leader. And, uh, and then Dolly, so maybe we'll start with Pat and then Dolly can um, tag on to that. Yeah, excellent. So uh, I think that says it all. I was the senior patrol leader. So obviously um, I'm not 17. <laughs> you can probably tell by what? the beard. <laughs> I have a job. <laughs> I'm not in school, but I was the senior patrol leader. So that really showcases that that it is a very practical experience through scouting. Like we're, we're wearing the uniform on purpose because we're actually scouts going through the whole process. And so like coming back to the youth, I was able to really see from their point of view what scouting is like today because of my practical experience in this wonderful training. Yeah, amazing. Truly, truly. Dolly, well, let me talk about the the the, pro, the days. What what can someone ex, can expect? Um, the days, um, you know, kind of a guideline of each day. What what are they going to get? Uh, you're going to get three meals. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get an awesome week at the beach. Who doesn't need a week at the beach? Um, that beautiful Camp Clark is where we'll be stationed. Uh, there will be um, some chair time. You might want to bring a pad for that chair. <laughs> um, but there's also going to be outdoor time, heaven willing. Um, we're going to spend time playing, learning, eating, uh, talking, maybe opening new doors for where you can place your scouting, uh, where you wanna take your scouting experience and how we can just be in the moment with our learning and our being at the beach and having the, the opportunity of a lifetime that other people spend thousands of dollars with uh, in my patrol. Um, a gentleman shared that his company had spent thousands of dollars sending him to trainings just like this. And this is when he got it. This is when all of those values and vision came to him where he wanted to be as a leadership that the other courses just didn't strike a note with him. Yeah. Pat, speak to um, the fun, the whole thing's a fun adventure, but there are serious times um, obviously, as it, we're doing these trainings and modules, let's talk about the fun ones first. What are some of the games, you know, scouting through a purpose yeah. through games? Yeah, absolutely. So it, thinking about the different days, it, you're, you're put together initially, day one, you're put together with uh, a group of people and you are a patrol and you're you're a patrol with other patrols in a troop. And so you get to go through uh, and, and like the very first thing you do as a gathering activity, you do these gathering games. Uh, I mean, you're, it's like really uh, like leadership, uh, team building style of games with a purpose. So Baden-Powell always says, you know, games with a purpose and that's what scouting is. So you, like uh, not to <laughs> spoil all the games, but there's something where you have to, you know, navigate like in a circle and like throwing balls back and forth to each other. It, and it, it boosts your communication skills because you, you start calling out, hey, Chris, I'm going to throw this to you or whatever. Uh, or, or if I don't, then it hits you in the face. And then we learn something. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Chris. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Chris. <laughs> that's all right. I'm used to it. <laughs> I'm a scoutmaster, hey, by the way. <laughs> you can throw the ball right back at us trainers. That's more than welcome. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the, it, it's a five-day course, and those first 
three days. Like, like Dolly said, there's some seat time. There's some outside time. Uh, day four, it's really a lot of outside time. That's our outdoor experience. And there is just a bunch of super fun games that you're going to play on day four. That is when your patrol, hopefully, is really gelling. And, and you're not, you know each other's names, you know strengths, weaknesses, you know how to, to get by. And you might think your patrol is better than the other patrol. And maybe you are. You get to prove it in some of these games. Yeah, absolutely. And they, they are amazing. They're fun. And you leave each game with um, something you might not have known about yourself, something you learned about others um, that you didn't know about them. In most cases, the individuals that you're going to be with um, in these patrol, you don't know. Um, and we want you to bring others to this course. And we'll talk about that uh, in just a little bit. But definitely um, the way that we, we, we work with this when we assign uh, you to a patrol is to intentionally get you into a patrol that you're not with uh, somebody that you know. You're going to get to see them, and the, but to give you a different experience. And so you're going to be with a group of people that you don't know, and uh, you're going to get to learn a lot about them. The, the great thing about this curriculum is there is time to get to know others. I know um, in the past, we can, I think we can address this here in a few minutes, Dolly, if uh, Chris is all right with that. The myths of Wood Badge what it is and what it isn't. Is this a cult? Is this a click? Is this about staff? Is this about, and I think we can address all that in just a little bit, but you get ample amount of time um, to learn uh, about your fellow patrol members. And uh, I know for um, many patrols, these are individuals that you're going to make lifelong friends with. Um, some cases you might not, but uh, in most cases, these are individuals that you're going to be um, making lifelong friends with and to be able to share the story, because it was the same journey. You're in the same journey. Each one takes a different um, perspective of what they've seen and what they've learned, but you're all on the journey together working in the patrol method. Dolly, how does that patrol method work for the course? Well, one, as Pat alluded to, it enlightens you as to what your youth go through. And you go back with a little better understanding of what it is to receive maybe incomplete instruction or something isn't complete in your supplies, your, uh, your leader isn't there that day, somebody's got to step up. Um, there's a change of management, if you will, every day. There's an opportunity to be mm -hmm. the patrol leader. Um, so you will have a day of, of leadership within your, your time there and find out what that part is really like. Um, and not always as simple as you might imagine. Yeah. So you get to come in as a Cub Scout in Act One, and you're going to move into a troop and Troop One and, and be in the patrol method. And uh, it, it's pretty amazing. Pat, what would you add to that? I would say but part of the learning experience of uh, knowing what the youth are going through is also the patrol leaders council. So this is where the patrol leaders. So on a given day, let's say Dolly is our patrol leader. She goes off and, and gets all this great information from this wonderful meeting that the senior patrol leader is doing. And then we're all sitting back thinking, gosh, it'd be sure great to have all that information. And she comes back and maybe she gives it and maybe she doesn't. And that is exactly what the youth go through. <laughs> it's like, I, you better take good notes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, hey, Chris, so now that you've signed up for this course and we're obviously wanting others to sign up, we're looking for uh, up to 48 to join us next September. Um, what are some what are some myths that you hear about wood badge? I hear about uh, you have a project afterwards. Everybody has a, you know kind of a big a project they decide to work on, kind of like a, a mini eagle project kind of thing. I was talking to somebody this weekend uh, who and one of the moms from our troop, and she's uh, she's working on a a. I believe it's a, a kickball competition between the, the scout troops in Northeast Portland, I believe is what she's working on. So kind of an event kind of thing that she's putting together. So I've heard about that. And uh, yeah, it was just kind of like, is it just everybody sitting around and kicking it and having a good time and playing games? You know, that's all the great pictures and stuff. So it's interesting to hear 
that it's sort of this combined, uh, you know, corporate leadership, if you will, and that we then transition into leadership for our, for our units, but using the patrol method and using the things that we we're supposed to teach the scouts and that we get to learn that ourselves. I think that's really, really awesome. But yeah, just heard about, uh, didn't really know too much about it actually, other than, oh, people are wearing these, they've got these beads on their wrists and they do some service project and what is that? Something super scouty. (laughs) (laughs) Well, hey, we can talk about um, something that's going to take place um, on your journey um, at, at the course. And that is what we call the ticket. And the doll, you want to talk about the ticket? What, what? I've heard about this ticket. What is the ticket? The ticket is something that's unique to you. It's it's not inspired by your scoutmaster, not your district executive, uh, not your maybe inspired by your own youth, but certainly not um, directed by them. It's about your vision in scouting, your values for the program. And where do you want your leadership to talk, to take you? Um, you're going to learn so much about yourself in this. The exploration actually starts before you arrive. You'll, you'll get a sheet to help you um, maybe explore some thoughts that you hadn't had before. Uh, where do you get your inspiration from? What is it you read? Um, how does this have the chance to impact you. And then all of that unfolds as you go through the course. Um, Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Oh, well, it just doesn't float down from heaven. No, you have to create it. (laughs) Um, So we have an opportunity to explore your strengths and all of that will go into five goals that you propose for yourself as a part of your vision and your mission for the scouting program in the next 18 months after you leave course, putting the skills you learned to work. I would say additionally, don't you don't have to worry about those five goals until midway through the course. Like don't don't think, oh, I need to come up with five goals before you even step foot on the course, because you will hopefully get inspired by the learning that's going on. And then you'll start figuring, you'll talk to your patrol mates, you'll talk to the other course members and thinking, man, that's a really good idea. I should incorporate that in my goal. And that's when you really form it. Yeah. Yeah, Come with your thoughts, but don't, don't pre-plan a ticket. Be ready. Don't pre-plan a ticket. You have lots of support. Take in that learning. Yeah. Yeah. It's not complicated. I think it used to be. Today, ultimately, I'll probably help you or Dolly will. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) Maybe Andrew. (laughs) Maybe. Exactly. In in days of old, if you do talk to people who have been through Wood Badge in years past before 21st century, it was complicated. Uh, Boy Scouts had 30 plus ticket items to write. Um, There was a Cub Scout trainer Wood Badge. There were a lot of elements to it. this focus is on your leadership, not on your ability to make soap on a rope or build a, a tripod for a fire. Uh, this is about how to be the leader you can be and then develop that in your youth. Yeah, we should mention that real quick. So um, what happened is that um, over the past decade leading up to, um, I think we're trying to improve the wood badge model every year. And it was decided uh, in the past five years that we need to look at differently. Times have changed um, and we've got this great curriculum, but we need to update it and we need to look at things differently. And so in 2020, they launched the new curriculum and we have had one um, last year in last September, um, we hosted the first um, wood badge with the new curriculum uh, in 2021. Unfortunately, we weren't able to hold a course in 20 uh, due to COVID. But so we launched that new curriculum. um, And what what it does, one, it gives you more time than the old curriculum far as when you're on course. It's it's still very busy, but there is time to breathe. There is time to spend with others. It's not this nonstop uh, open to close, you know, seven in the morning to 10 at night. Um, It also took that ticket project and it made it simple and, and it gave you a more power to um, do what you want with it. And, and it's not so complicated. You, it, it can be a couple sentences um, to start your goal. It, it does, it's not this 
um, lengthily, length, length, length long. What else is different, Pat, from what people might have heard about the last syllabus and now the new what we call curriculum? Yeah, I mean, it's shorter. Like, that's probably the biggest thing. Instead of six days, it's five days. Yep. So everything's uh, a little more streamlined. Uh, like you said, there's a lot more chill time. Uh, I mean, I'm not promising a lot of chill time, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but uh, it, it's a little more built in. But remember, it's more than you got before. <laughs> It is, it's more yeah, than you got before. Yes. When you're thinking, man, I'm tired. Think, oh man, what what was it like three years ago? <laughs> and it, it, yeah, and it is a long day. I can tell you, breakfast starts at seven in the morning, and uh, by nine o'clock at night, we're winding down. But it's, um, you know, if you're used to a nap in the afternoon, uh, that's not happening. And yeah, if you think you're going to if you're going to sleep in through breakfast, that's not happening. Um, <laughs> But One of the other biggest changes, sorry, Dolly, is nope. the, um, the, there's this project that used to happen. Um, like if, if there's like a two weekend course, like there's a whole bunch of like stuff that your patrol had to work on, uh, it, or in a week long course, like a basically half a day, you had to dedicate to putting this whole thing together that is streamlined down to an hour and it's fantastic. And it's really, it's like a, from the heart presentation, you're not like looking up, you know, what the Sea Scouts do <laughs> for, <laughs> it, 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 and like trying to incorporate Cub Scouts and Scouts, we say, and Sea Scouts and all this stuff. It is really just uh, from the heart. What have we learned about uh, in a very specific way? Yeah. yeah. Chris is asking to unmute. Well, Chris, permission. <laughs> nice. What would, if you guys could say, I would say one word that would describe for each of you that would describe what you, what you really got out of it. Um, or learned or learned from it? What would be one word for you guys to describe that? One word? Understanding. Yeah, one. Okay. I understood so much more after I went through the course, why things happen the way they happen, how people walk away and you don't know why and how to resolve those things. Uh, for me, it would be leadership. I thought I was a leader in 2013, but I learned that there's more in the toolbox and that uh, I left there um, that I am a leader, but I can be a better leader and I can definitely be a more effective leader. And I, that's what I left with is uh, leadership. I want to really steal Andrews. <laughs> I won't. I'll come up with my own word. But man, I did fi figure out something about myself um, a little bit later that I had no idea about, um, which was very enlightening in, in just in me as a person and scouting. And I mean, it's just it's helped in my work, my relationship with my wife. It, it's pretty incredible. But I would say networking is is one thing that I really took away from it. Mm, yeah. I before going to Woodbatch, you know, I, I was in my troop and my pack and that was about it. <laughs> and we went to a camporee sometimes. <laughs> and then I went to Woodbatch like, wow, this place is huge. Uh, there's, I, I met so many people from other districts and the entire council and some from outside the council. Uh, ended up going to a national Woodbatch. I met people from all over the world. It was just incredible. And I, I would have never had that experience without Woodbatch. Hey, can I address a couple more myths? Yes, please. Is you don't have to have a certain rank or position in scouting to attend. You can be a Cub Scout leader and attend. Um, you don't have to be invited. Uh, I had uh, a prospect tell me that they thought they had to be invited, so they had not signed up because they thought it was a by invitation. And if you're believing that, this is your invitation. <laughs> Yeah, um, someone shared with me that they thought it was a woodworking course, and so <laughs> they, honest, honest, um, they they were under awesome. the perception it was a woodworking course, and so they had not signed up or sought information on it. There, can, there is there is craft though. <laughs> there, there's there, arts and craft. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like therapy, <laughs> but I can tell you, it's better with a buddy. So even if you're not going to be in the same patrol, it's good to know somebody else 
just to have familiarity, to have somebody to kind of compare notes with. And maybe as part of that ticket writing process, um, somebody you're familiar with to bounce ideas off of. Um, yeah. It is not a brainwashing. Um, yes, it's a long day, but it is not a brainwashing. And you may have heard some horror stories about some of the methodology in past courses, and that is gone. Yeah, absolutely. As a leader of this particular course, another, um, I don't, I'll say it, it, it's a myth, but a perception, I think, um, had, had to do with uh, the staff, um, of the trainers versus the learners. And, um, you know, this we're wearing green jackets and they're wearing no jacket or, you know, we're were seem to be it was the, is the staff um, the attention or is the learners uh, the attention and in this new curriculum and not not that uh, we've had some, I've been on a part of four of these groups we've had some great staffs um, but yeah there's some things that we've learned um, from the old syllabus and now we're in the new curriculum that you know we we're, we're all one so you know if if we're wearing a green jacket dang it you're gonna have a green jacket. And if we've got a black hat, dang it, you're going to have a black hat. And because uh, we're all one, we're we're in the patrol method, and I'm your scout master, and um, Dolly's our you know, our commissioner and our and our troop mentor and our historian, and and Pat, you know, he he works with um, the uh, as the ASM, he's working with the with the a ASM of troop guys with the with the learners, so they can support you. But we're all one. I promise you. If you come and you attend this, you're going to leave with team. We're all a team. And it's my job as this course director working with um, our training staff uh, to make that happen. And to we're not perfect, but dang it, we're going to show you a good time. And uh, we're there as servant leaders to serve you. Andrew's cult reference earlier was uh, from a university of scouting call. And um, that was one of her concerns. I said, people go to Wood Badge and they come back and they're like all hyped up about Wood Badge, Wood Badge. Um, you'll come away with a new excitement from what you learned. Um, it, it will impact you perhaps in a way you didn't expect. And you'll take home values and vision that you didn't know you had maybe when you arrived. And that's what the Wood Badge, Wood Badge is like. <laughs> yeah, I think some of that, Dolly, it, like for me personally, I, so I went, I first went in 17 and, but I had thought about it like, gosh, maybe I should go in 15, maybe I should go in 16 and, and it just never happened. I never signed up and then I finally got there as I was leaving Cub Scouts and going in full time in Scouts BSA as an assistant Scoutmaster and, and I came out of it and I'm like, why didn't I go sooner? <laughs> and that was like the wood badge, wood badge for me, like. I'm like, oh, I need to tell my friends they need to go so they don't do what I did and just wait. Yeah. Um, yeah. This kind of takes me in my mind then to why didn't I go sooner? Uh, I was the mother of two boys. I had a husband that worked. Uh, it, at that time, you had to have three unadorned uniforms to go. Um, part of the learning was how to have everybody in your patrol so every patch onto their uniform. That's well, not part of the curriculum. Yeah, I'd be so tough. <laughs> um, but it created a lot of storming, which, you know, was productive, but uh, yeah. And so the fee was $285. Um, it wasn't available locally. So I would have to go the closest was Santa Barbara, California. So know that even if this course doesn't intrigue you, there are courses happening all around us. You don't have to go all the way to Santa Barbara. Um, so yeah, you'll have obstacles that you'll overcome. If price is one of them, there are scholarships available. And so don't hesitate to reach out to this contact information um, for Andrew that'll come up on the screen later. If, if the fee is holding you back from going, then please have a conversation with Andrew because they have ways to make that minimal. Yeah, absolutely. The great thing is uh, that we have these scholarships available. We've used them every year. Um, folks have needed scholarships to attend this course, um, and we want to provide those. Um, there's multiple ways uh, to, to um, get scholarships, and um, so absolutely reach out to me um, by email. 
CPC woodbadge22 at gmail.com. And Chris, we can back up just a little bit. Um, so the cost is $295. For that $295, you're going to get the course curriculum um, worksheets that you're going to need. Uh, you're going to get access to an awesome, wonderful staff. You're going to get uh, a, a name tag, an embroidered name tag, uh, a, a hat. You're going to get all your meals included. Uh, your, uh, your camp fees are included. Um, you don't need to do anything. Uh, you're going to get a course t-shirt, which is included in this $295. So you don't need to do anything, but come on out after you've paid this uh, $100 deposit, do it registration, paid in full by August 1st. Um, and then we'll take the rest um, before you um, attend um, by the August 1st deadline. But you need to, you know, we have some flexibility if, if needed. But you, you, at that point, you're just going to show up. Um, you're going to get a phone call from the staff, um, from, the tr from us trainers to check in. You'll be able to ask us questions. Um, what, what do I need to bring? And we're going to share all that with you. Um, and the great thing about Camp Clark is that we've got the mini DACs. So you really just bring, you know, your gear for the week, your scout uniform, whether it's a cub or adventurer, sea scout, a troop, um, a sleeping bag, a nice pad, a pillow, uh, a notebook. And, and I'm sure there's more, but your 10 essentials, um, but we make it pretty, pretty simple. And Camp Clark is amazing. I, I, I get to as course director select um, which camp I want to use uh, to um, put the course together. And I love Camp Clark. Um, it's an amazing property on the Pacific Ocean. And if you've never been, here's a great opportunity to come spend a week. Uh, we will get on the beach. We will get some beach time. It might not be a lot, but I promise you, you're going to get on that beach. And um, it, it's just an amazing place. It's a great place to hold um, this course. It, it just flows really well there. We're doing the one week course. I know for some that's not ideal and I get questions about that. And, you know, unfortunately for 2022, uh, we're only gonna be able to hold one course. Um, in past, we've held two courses, a spring and a fall, but just uh, because of factors for 2022, we're only gonna be able to hold um, one course. The one week course flows really well. It's a Tuesday through Saturday. You will arrive Monday night on uh, September the 13th and uh, do your check-in and get to meet others and mingle a little bit before you go to bed. The course would start Tuesday morning uh, with breakfast at 7 a.m. And then the course ends about four o'clock um, on Saturday, I believe at yeah, the 17th um, with, a, with a goodbye and um, empowered and uh, so that, that, you know, in that five days, it used to be a six. So um, the thought is that for those that um, have the weekend off, they'd also have Monday, um, they'll get back home Saturday night. Um, but the course flows really well on a, on a five day. And so for this particular year, we've chosen to do the five day. Um, if you're not able to attend the five day, we want you to go to a wood badge training. There's opportunities in Southern Oregon. There's opportunities in uh, Washington. Um, multiple different locations in the state of Washington to do this training. Obviously, we would like you to stay here, but for us and, and Dolly and Pat, I think you would agree, more importantly, you go. Um, we want you to attend Wood Badge. And if that's with us, fantastic. And, and if that's not with us, we get it. We want you to go where you're able to, um, to make that happen for you and your family. That's awesome. We definitely have some folks on Facebook here who are at the, uh, they're super scouts. I mean, let's, let's, let's not uh, <laughs> gloss over this fact, but Mr. David Perry, as you guys all know, he said, this will be a fantastic <laughs> course. Uh, and we know that guy. Are, Pat Anderson and Dolly are the raddest of individuals. And, oh, I'm hurting. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jennifer Ramirez, uh, she said, Wood Vag is so great. I'm still friends with some of my fellow owls. Another one of those weird things. I don't know what she means by that. Good. <laughs> but, but here's what's, what I love what she says, though. She says, even as an introvert, I had a great time and still use the tricks and tools I picked up on the course. So that's really, that's great to know. I mean, some of us might see these pictures. I'm not exactly an introvert, so it doesn't freak me out. But some, I've seen a lot of the goofy pictures of all you guys and, you know, singing and dancing, doing whatever it is you're doing. 
but I love that she said that even as an introvert, she just had a great, great time and learned a lot. So, so don't be shy, gang. I will, I'll be there. It'll be fun. Uh, and I'm totally intrigued by it. Tom Osgood said, definitely worth every minute. So, uh, so I love it. And, and it sounds like we, I thought for sure we had to carve our own badge out of wood and then sew it on our uniform. In the beginning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we have evolved. <laughs> Good. Uh, it used to be that you had to carve your own second boot. Well, all, all those individuals you just named are amazing people. And this course is definitely for introverts, for extroverts, for uh, any, anyone. And you know, maybe yeah, at times it might be a little overwhelming. My wife identifies as an introvert um, and she left, you know, empowered. And wow, there, there, there is a place for me. There is a place for me. We're respectful of all. Um, and we just want to have fun and you can be an introvert or an extrovert and have fun, but ultimately, ultimately we want to be respectful. These are the, uh, the aims and method of the wood badge course that we use. Um, but, uh, so Jennifer, I appreciate that. Definitely appreciate that, that comment there. Well, I love how you're, you're sharing the fact that it's really, it's as if we are scouts ourselves and we go into it with that attitude. So think of it as coming to this place and space as, as your uniform says, if you're a Cub Scout or you're a Scouts BSA and, uh, and you get to come into it kind of learning from really from their eyes. I think that's really exciting. I'm excited about it from, uh, to, to really think about it from their perspective, because I know as a, as a leader myself, I, I forget about that and I'm caught up in the things that, that I think I know. And so this is, this is going to be really, really fun. It seems like it's, uh, I've just heard wonderful things and it seems like we just get some great, great tools that we really get to take back. But also I've heard some great things about learning about leadership and empathy and communication and, and teamwork. And uh, I think that's, boy, if, if anything, that's something we all could learn more about, whether it's at, at work or at school or with our troop or our pack. So it's, it's really exciting. So I really appreciate, appreciate Chris, all I, of the feedback and the, and yeah. the wisdom. Chris, I know we just have a little believers. more time left. Um, we should talk about just really quickly, Dolly and Pat, um, the ticket, how long it takes to work the ticket and uh, the regalia. Go Pat. I'll take whatever you leave me. <laughs> well, you, uh, so the, the course happens and at the conclusion of the practical course, which is September 13 through 17, there is up to 18 months to work your five goals. And, and so you're going to be working with your troop guide, who is your ticket counselor on an appropriate amount of time to work on each goal. Not all of them are going to come due exactly at 12 months. One goal might be two months. One might be four months. Uh, you know, something about a year, you know, nine months, year, 14 months, uh, whatever kind of works in your schedule. Uh, this is not like a lifestyle killer. It's something uh, additional that you get to do uh, that you put your stamp on it. And, and it's, it's all you. It's pretty amazing. The... Um, so, but you have really up until 18 months, although you, you and we would prefer you finish it up much earlier. <laughs> if they need more time, is that an opportunity? Yeah. Oh, you, you can always talk to your ticket counselor. Yeah. That's great. Because Dolly, might... talk about the, the regalia. So you've completed your ticket. You, what's, what happens after? Oh my gosh. You receive a suitable for framing certificate. <laughs> you get um, these handsome tan neckerchiefs that you've seen around. Um, lots of people are sporting them. You'll want to be one of those people. Um, at the close of that uh, learning, you've demonstrated all of the skills that you learned uh, at course. Uh, you'll also receive your beads as recognition and a handsome uh, leather woggle. No beginning, no end, just like the service you provide to Scouty. <laughs> well, Chris, I think we've covered all of it. Um, and if we've missed something, folks can reach out. Uh, they can go on the website, cpcbsa.org, um, backslash, I believe, Woodbadge. Send me an, uh, a note at cpcwoodbadge22 at gmail.com. I'm happy to answer any question um and so we, it, it, i'm sure we've missed some stuff today um we got one hour but happy to answer any questions it sounds like the facebook people took care of the holes <laughs> there we go <laughs> and thanks for being out there yeah absolutely appreciate that awesome 
Well, thanks everybody for, for joining us today. And of course, this is being recorded. So we'll actually have it on the Wood Badge page. So you'll actually get, can watch it at your leisure and pleasure or listen to it. And you can just hear some of the, some of the other stories and whatnot. So that's at cpcbsa.org slash Wood Badge. And all of the information is there. You can see it here also uh, for those watching or watching later at cpcwoodbadge22 at gmail.com. That's cpcwoodbadge22 at gmail.com. That's how to reach Mr. Danner on this and again at cpcbsa.org slash woodbatch. Well, I'm excited about it. This is going to be really fun. It's going to be fun to be a kid. I, I, I still love sledding and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm all for games and silliness. So that'll be great. I'm really excited. And thank you guys so much for just uh, for leading in this endeavor and all the passion and joy you bring to scouting for your kids, for your scouts, for all the scouts that you engage with, for all of us uh, goofball parents who uh, are going, I don't know what's next. Uh, that's super. You guys are always an inspiration and I can't thank you enough for all that you do. And for all those who've helped out too uh, with, uh, with creating all the content materials and everything else. So thanks. Thanks to one and all. All right. Next up gang, we have a, a variety of, of webinars. Obviously today was wood badge and we've got just a reminder. We did last week, we did one on um, a summer camp. So we're actually going to be doing summer camp updates as the last, uh, the last webinar of the month. So keep an eye out for that. We have, we'll have constantly have updates on that, what's going on. And we'll talk about COVID as, as needed and things of that nature, but we've got a whole bunch of webinars planned. Going to be great, uh, great stuff about why is, why scouting? Why do we even do scouting? That's going to be one of the ones coming up here. It's going to be really great. That kind of ties into Woodbatch. I mean, these things are all really amazing how they tie them together and teach us how to grow and become better leaders and lead these kids. And it's really, really awesome. So, so we'll have a bunch of topics on that. Uh, we'll stop in just a moment here. I just want to thank everybody for, for scouting with us for just this adventure that we get to embark upon. It's going to be a great year, as you saw at the beginning, and this uh, will be recorded. As I mentioned, you'll be able to listen to it, watch it at any time. And also for those of you in the Cascade Pacific Council, you'll be receiving a, an email newsletter. We've divvied it up into Scouts BSA and Cub Scout versions of the newsletter and then the other one. So if you're sort of flagged in our system as being in Cub Scouts or Scouts BSA, you'll have a newsletter that's shorter and sweeter and more to the point and based on things that you're interested in or that your your scouts would be interested in so so don't forget to check that out watch your spam filters for those kind of things and and we'd love to have you read those so that's enough for today thank you all so much for joining us can't thank you enough for being here thanks for all you do with scouts and thanks to the team here and we will see you next week thanks Chris. Yeah, <laughs>